terrific scrap at the foot of the Premier League. Green Park Rangers and Wimbledon gained precious wins at the weekend. All the action and the rest of the week's goals to come. Second to bottom, Bolton face 16th place to Manchester City. Both have a pressing need for a swift upturn in fortune. This was an important fixture and just as significant the meeting of two more strugglers, Southampton and Coventry, five days earlier. Down at the Dell, it's been a familiar tale, as it is for Coventry, both clubs fighting to keep their heads above water. The Saints went into the game in the third relegation phase ahead of only Queen's Park Rangers and Bolton. The victory protects Southampton above top three and runs the Midlanders deeper into trouble. It turned out to be a tense occasion played on a rain-soaked surface. Here with three highlights and plus the team news is your match commentator, Ian Dark. So let's have a look at the two sides for you tonight. Southampton are clearly going out to attack and win. They have the ex-Arsenal winner Neil Heaney fit again after two and a half months out of the side and Tommy Widrington has to make way. There's a problem in defence, Richard Hall is after the carpentry, so the former Newcastle man, Alan Nielsen, is recalled and will play in central defence. As for Coventry City, well, they're glad to welcome back their midfield anchor man, Kevin Richardson, who's seen so much before in his career. He's missed the last two games with suspension. In a reshuffle, Peter Unlove, who seems to have rather lost his way this season, drops to the bench. It's a side including two big money recent signings, Ian Jess from Aberdeen and Liam Daish, the Birmingham City captain, signed for one and a half million pounds. So here's Letizia with the early corner for Southampton. Jason Dart on the near post and Southampton have the lead after only two minutes. The central defender stealing into a position where nobody expected to find him. And a very good header indeed and a key goal for Southampton. something here for Southampton with Jim Jordan. Oh, that's a tremendous save by Steven Grizovic. Otherwise, it would have been two. We've got two of the old war horse goalkeepers of the Premier League in action here. 37-year-old Dave Besant, 38-year-old Steven Grizovic. That's a great save. Great run this by Heaney. This is what he can do. Terrific run. Boros is trying to get back. Heaney might go all the way here. And Agrizovic just blocks it. But what an exciting run that was from Neil Heaney. He runs over half the length of the pitch. Tremendous speed. Once he's away, you can't really get back to him. And did Steve Agrizovic do well here? No, Ron Atkinson down on the bench so far. He's leaving that to Gordon Strachan, who's being groomed to take over from him one of these days. Not yet, though. Here's Heaney. Good shot. And a Grizovic again. Really had to do his stuff, because that looked as if it swerved wickedly in the air. Well, Heaney's making quite a comeback to the Southampton side tonight. More acrobatics from the Coventry keeper. Again, they go for the long one. Shipley. Neil Shipley, the top scorer for Southampton with 10 goals this season. It's been a good buy for them. Alan Ball snapped him up from Chelsea for 1.2 million pounds. There are times here when either side are finding it hard to put together two consecutive touches. It's that frenetic. Richardson, dinky little chip forward. Solako Dublin didn't quite bounce for him. Worked it back well. Williams! And this time, Dave Besson has to do the business. It was well struck that by Paul Williams. Recently, Williams got in on the act 
in that 2-2 draw at Everton with a goal. That's a great save by Dave Pheasant. Even better than it looked at first time of asking. He was going the other way too. Turned and got a hand to it. Here's Whelan to Richardson, who's very, very influential. Williams borrows. Oh, and there might be something here for Jess. And again, Pheasant off his line like lightning to deny Coventry City. It all opened up here for Ian Jess, who must have thought he was on for his first ever Coventry City goal. More magnificent keeping. Salako. Cracking header, blocked. Well, Dace it was who got in the header, and it looked like Nielsen who got in the way of it. Coventry so close to an equaliser. Burrows. Williams has given it away, and maybe Nielsen can start a counter here. Coventry had a lot of them forward at that moment. Nielsen still waiting for support. Letizia. Dace back to get it away. Nielsen! Well, didn't he hit that well? This is a good effort from the defender who inspired that attack in the first place. And the header came out. Left foot volley, well struck. Watson coming off for Southampton. And uh, Peter Unlove comes on for Coventry. Krista Warren being introduced as Watson comes off. And uh, John Salako coming off too for Coventry City. Presumably Unlove will be operating in that wide left role as a conventional winger. So Krista Warren, the lad who's come on for Southampton, is only 21. They picked him up from non-league football. There he is. So, uh, big night for him. This is, by the way, Krista Warren, not Christopher, as Letitia. Oh, that's dangerous. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Dodd again. There's the man on the end of the cross. Not picked up for the second time in the match. And he headed it down too much. It's always the golden rule, heading for goal, usually to head down. But it lost all the pace off the ball when he did it. Up towards Dublin. Bouncing around dangerously. Whelan's back header. It's not away yet. Just tried his luck. Now it's in love. Hurls it. Oh, that's a great save by Dave Besson. I think he's got a hand on that. And it was enough to put the ball onto the post. Peter Unlove. Great effort. Jesse shot his block. It comes out of Unlove. He fakes it deliciously. It looks to be on its way. What a save this is from Dave Besson. This is a goalkeeper who's had so much stick in his career. But that is one of the saves of the season for me. Oh, he's dropped that one, though. Well, I think probably... <laughs> In the space of about 90 seconds there, you saw Dave Besant's career encapsulated. From brilliance like that, to that blunder from the corner. <laughs> he certainly is a character. It's a bit of a sloppy ball, that one. From Whelan, who dropped back into a defensive position. Has come out here to Letizia on the body. And must be wondering where the next goal is coming from. The last one was in the FA Cup against Crew. The last league one, as I think I mentioned earlier, was back in November. Southampton just picking up the tempo again here towards the end as Majuk comes forward this time. Chipley lays it wide. Heaney. Charlton. Venison has just sat in there and been very economic. 
Oh, nicely done by Charlton that, and the chance for second goal! And somehow, Krista Warren can't put it in. And that's what Dave Harrington thinks. The Southampton manager, how did that not go in? Great bit of work this by Simon Charlton, the fullback. Warren's there first. He couldn't quite get the decisive touch. It looked to me like the defender might have just got his foot in there as well to put him off. Charlton gets it away. Can Williams win this? He can. Maybe a last effort for Coventry City. No free kick. And Southampton do have one. As Dion Dublin's emotions spill over. It looks like six games now without a win for Coventry. Their last victory on February the 10th against Chelsea. Southampton on the verge of ending their own losing streak. The whistle goes. Misery for Gordon Strachan and for Ron Atkinson. And a very, very big win that for Southampton. Down at the bottom, they move out of the bottom three. Coventry are now in that bottom three after Jason Dodds, second minute winner. But the real hero for Southampton, for me, was this fellow, the 37-year-old goalkeeper, Dave Besant, who made a series of important saves. Two of them were right out of the top drawer. The final score here, much to the delight of these fans, is Southampton 1, Coventry City 0. So, Dave Merrington and Southampton have improved their chances of staying up, but this at the expense of Coventry, who now drop into the bottom three. There are still plenty of permutations down at the bottom, but games are running out for the likes of Queen's Park Rangers, Coventry and Bolton Wanderers. Today for Bolton, it's Manchester City, who themselves aren't clear of danger yet. Both sides go into the game needing a positive result after four campaigns to date. After threatening to win promotion for so long, Bolton Wanderers finally realised Premier League status after beating Reading 4-3 in a memorable Division 1 playoff final in May of last year. And with a new management team in Roy McFarland and Colin Todd, the face of Bruce Rios who left for Arsenal, Bolton started the season full of expectations. But they would have to wait until their third match against Blackburn to earn their first win of the season. Coyle, the strikers, 1-0 to Bolton. With speculation surrounding Bolton's star players, Alan Stubbs and Jason McAteer, it was their captain Stubbs who supplied Bolton's winning goal. This to earn them victory over their local rivals. But the win proved to be a full storm. By the time they played Liverpool in November, Bolton had picked up just four points in seven games. Robbie Fowler's four-goal display at Anfield emphasised that Bolton were in for a long, hard season. McFarland and Todd, though, refused to compromise their attacking principles. This opened the door for Nottingham Forest to make Bolton pay the price with a last-minute winner at the City Ground. Bruce Riox returned to Burnden Park in October seemed to galvanise Bolton. The team responding with a spirited, resourceful display. McGinley! Bolton have scored! But their change of fortune didn't last long. Defeat at Southampton left them rock bottom. Even Scott Seller's arrival from league leaders Newcastle made little difference to their form. Wanderers were on the slide, losing crucial matches to other strugglers. And after being a goal up against Coventry at Burnden Park, goalkeeper Keith Brannigan's horrendous error in the last minute seemed to sum up the season. Bolton were pressing the self-destruct button and nothing it seemed was going to save them. Their poor form cost Roy McFarlane his job, with Colin Todd staying on in sole charge, aided by new coach Ian Porterfield. Astonishingly, when they visited Middlesbrough, Bolton pulled off one of the shots of the season, outclassing the Teesiders in a 4-1 win. In their very next league game, though, Bolton again showed their fragility in defence. A hammering by Manchester United. Ryan Giggs, still Giggs. Oh, it did nearly everything right. But it's still the dream start for Manchester United. Nicky Butt's goal was United's sixth highlighting the extent of the gulf that exists between the opposite ends of the table. But Bolton are nothing if not fighters, and after beating Leeds at Ellen Road, Alan Stubbs scored both goals to earn all three points at Highfield Road against Coventry. And with another win last week against Sheffield Wednesday, inspired by the ever-impressive Sussa Churchich, Bolton have now won three of their last four games. All may not yet be lost for the Lancashire club.
With the arrival of Alan Ball as manager from Southampton back in the summer, Manchester City season also started full of expectation. The City got off to their worst ever start. The main road club went 12 games without a win. And along the way, they suffered a 6-0 humiliation at the hands of a rampant Liverpool at Anfield. But Alan Ball isn't one to take defeat lightly, and by November the tide had begun to turn. City's first win coming against today's opponents, Bolton. City followed this with an unexpected win over Aston Villa. Alan Ball's summer signing, Georgi Kinkazi, scored his first league goal, to take them off the bottom of the table. Kinkazi from Georgia, just one of a number of overseas players who joined City recently. But it was an Irishman, Jerry Craney, who earned City their first away win at Leeds in December. Over the Christmas period, City's recovery looked in danger of floundering, with successive defeats against Chelsea and Blackburn, followed by a narrow defeat at Tottenham. On side! But I've had to wait a long time. Nigel Clough's arrival from Liverpool for a bargain £1.5 million pounds offered renewed hope. And it was Clough who immediately made his presence felt at Southampton, setting up Uwe Rosler for an important equalising goal. Clough then went on to score City's opener against fellow strugglers Queen's Park Rangers a week later. The City's greatest test yet of their world to survive came in their recent classic home encounter with Newcastle. On that day, City were to improve they have an unflagging spirit. With the game level at one apiece, they took the lead. He's quit! He's done it! City are ahead again! But back came Newcastle. Faustino Aspria scored his first goal in the Premier to equalise. But still, there was plenty more drama to unfold. Low mass. And Uwe Rossler gives Manchester City the lead again. Here's Philippe Albert. And there's your equaliser. In a season in which City's never-say-die approach has been vigorously tested, the Newcastle game provided a springboard for an unbeaten four-match run. Dick Patsy, a revelation now in midfield, scored both goals in their crucial 2-1 win over Bulls Old Club Southampton at Main Road. City have maintained a belief in attractive football whenever they've travelled, but have often paid the penalty, as in their match last week at Upton Park. City lost 4-2 to West Ham, and will give you some slack defending. They'll certainly need to improve in that area if they're going to survive the struggle. Ian Dowie was their downfall last week with two of the goals. So we come to today's crucial encounter in which both sides are desperate for the points in their pursuit of safety. Your match commentator is Martin Tyler. Bolton's main concern has been about their goalkeeping position. First choice, Keith Brannigan, is injured. The regular reserve, Aidan Davison, has looked nervous in the last two Premiership games. So just before this week's transfer deadline, Gavin Ward was signed from second division Bradford City and he's brought straight in for his debut today. Otherwise, it's the same side which beat Sheffield Wednesday with the Serbian, Sasha Churchic, a potential trump card in a free role. Manchester City also in the transfer market this week. Mikhail Kavalashvili signed from the Russian club Spartak Vladikavkaz. Mike Kikladze, who's been such a success with City, he's a Georgian. Today he's a substitute. Niall Quinn, who came off the bench to score twice at West Ham last weekend, is the main striker with Uwe Rosler not fit today. And Scott Kiley replaces Michael Fronset at left back. Local man for local derby, Roger Dilts from nearby Motley. Bolton in white, the Freitas chasing his own header, and Ike Immel called into action within a matter of seconds to come off his line and to pick the ball away as Bolton looked for the bright start. And they uh, want him all again to the City defenders. And this time it was a more comfortable task for the German goalkeeper. He's done so well since being brought into English football that Manchester City allowed Tony Coton for so long their regular to move and to move from back to Manchester United. Here's McGinley tries it from long range and well it 
zipped across the turf and Immel having a very hectic first minute of the match Quinn who's got Nigel Clough as his supporting striker and Kim Kratzer operating just behind Bolton really tried to to uh, play in a, a cavalier way and uh, caught a cold here against Manchester United it's Quinn with a flick Niall Quinn has scored and Bolton might be catching a cold here against Manchester City and Gavin Ward on his Bolton debut is beaten by Quinn's flick no wonder he's smiling no wonder Manchester City is smiling it was all in their own penalty area in the first minute first break forward and from the free kick Quinn worked to position and as the ball finally came in a lovely little glance Bolton nil, Manchester City won Niall Quinn two goals last Saturday in the losing cause finding some form in front of goal at a crucial time Manchester City have won only one away game in the league this season that was at Leeds corner of Phillips and he's going to be leaving it for King Clancy about whom Manchester City are uh, very proud that they've uh, brought him into English football and they're determined to hang on to him despite it just obviously he's got it from other clubs that's Brown <laughs> I don't know how much Ward knew about it but the ball struck him and stayed close enough to hang on to it. Michael Brown's volley Stubbs backing his own class and well that will have given Bolton a little bit of confidence not just the player himself but the team generally because in the hurly-burly of midfield that was a more controlled piece of play from the home captain hasn't got them very far forward Highly. McGinley's throw Greatest first to it. And Brightball gets the better of Churchich again. Lomas. This encourages the Manchester City fans. Who will probably give us the City's record this season. Not feel too comfortable about the team defending a 1 0 lead for some 88 minutes. got through about 23 minutes of those since uh, they went in front headed on by McGinley got McGinley again but it was certainly dipping under the bar Mike Immel who's a genuine shot stopper as a goalkeeper it's his real strength on his line and he got an arm up to protect Manchester City's lead there but Bolton have a corner McGinley trying to make a nuisance of himself to the goalkeeper Sellers will take it. That's Thompson's header. Sellers drives it in again towards Coleman. Who was well marshaled by Quinn. McGinley has been out the team here recently and has not been happy about it he uh, wants to impress for Scotland for Euro 96 and that's an impressive strike third Lomas well Quinn does enough to make Fairclough play it out
Gaza. Some of his onside, he's got a good angle for the cross here. Quinn just says, oh, I'm an apology that he didn't really attack it. Fair club puts it behind for the corner. Riley to take it. Holman trying to get to him. Lomas. Quinn. Clough. It's loose. And Nigel Clough very nearly in for number two. Terrific knockdown by Quinn. And Gavin Wool was able to get back. Coleman. Phillips. Now well, this time uh, Brightwell had to come out and do some defending away from Churchill. She's just having a look back now. Phillips. A chance to cut it by Churchill. Blocked by Curl. Stubbs once and not the second time. McGinley's there. And it's going to drop behind. Well, it was the first moment of freedom for the Serb. And it came when Jimmy Phillips got round the back here. Churchich trying to steer it in, but Keith Curl covered superbly. And for all the subsequent efforts, it never came quite that close again. by Brightwell on Churchic. Bolton kept the ball. And Ian Brightwell is going to be booked. Or well, at least he's going to be spoken to. It is just a talking to. Phillips. Curls head around. Well, a couple of times now, Jimmy Phillips has been in advanced positions down the bottom left. Churchich coming deeper to get into the game. Gets it back from De Freitas. That's a little cameo of what he is capable of. A player from Partizan Belgrade. He tried to round off an attack of which he himself was the architect. Now the Freitas. Sellers. Clough can't control it. Bolt's got another throw. Will Rowe is stuck in that part of the pitch. Line was wagging some of it. The culprit on Thompson. Thompson seemed to be winning that particular race, a tug back by Summerby. And the name, and a famous name in Manchester City's history, is recorded in the notebook of Roger Dill. So Bolton have a free kick. Scott Sellers to take it. Quinn, hooked back in by Stubbs, might come for McGinley. Thompson having to turn and the ball runs out. The spectators uh, in that part of the pitch seeing plenty of the action close up in these uh, crucial minutes at the opening of the second half as Bolton try to put extra tempo into their play to find sharper attacks. Stubbs, fair club. McGinley again moves unselfishly to the right-hand side to keep the shape. To try and act as a winger against Hiley. Knocked away by Curl and then banged away, further away by Brightwell. 
It's all in Manchester City territory at the moment. This is Coleman. And uh, although he went off, the game had actually stopped. because King Kladze is trying to weave a spell against them here. Highly. Against Bergson. Clough. Brown. King Kladze. Still. Some of well, the player who scored the goal that beat Bolton at Main Road, Mickey Summerby, teed up here by King Kladze, who taunted Coleman, drew Phillips in, and Summerby smacked it. He hoped goalwards. The power was there, but the accuracy wasn't. Again. Bolton having the possession of Manchester City so far soaking it all up with a good degree of comfort and Clough again winning it back waiting for runners he's got to Lomas it's a great break from him King Padzi in the middle and it's gone across everyone until Stubbs sticks out a foot and that's the worry for Bolton They've got to commit players forward, but if they overcommit, well, particularly with a good team man like Nigel Clough, tackling to win the ball and then getting it back, getting it through for Lomas. The fine break. This is Simons. And Quinn off the goalkeeper. Off the bar from Clough. And Manchester City, a millimetre or two away from going two in front. It might yet happen. King Kladze. And then, from that angle, he had to produce something really from his wide-ranging repertoire to get the better of Ward. And Manchester City having hit the bar. And looking as though Bolton might be not further back but it didn't quite happen and it stays at 1-0 and De Freitas there's Bergson Thompson's in some space here could that be a turning point in the game Churchich spins behind for the corner Thompson telling Phillips to leave it. It's Coleman, can get it down. Oh. Coleman again. And once more. Suddenly it's City hanging on when they were so close to scoring a second themselves. Now they can break. Highly. Well, everyone else is rather off the pace for Scott Highly. Well, it was Simons who had the shot. Goalkeeper lost it. Quinn was in there. The spin, the cluff, the bar still shaking. Now Brightwell's got to be careful inside the area. 
as Coleman and that's uh, well it was a shot and it might have turned out to be a half decent cross off the outside of the foot Simon Coleman who has made a heartening recovery and a return to this level of play in the last couple of months after a badly broken leg kept him out for a year Green Stubbs Churchich and McGinley must score well it's been a long road back for Bolton Wanderers 16 minutes to go and finally they found an equaliser and Brightwell in the end couldn't maintain the concentration on Churchich who got it across and John McGinley from close in helped by the deflection firmly passed Immel Clough now Phillips Thompson now Summerbay who was booked early in the second half gets a second yellow card and it's all going wrong for Alan Ball's team at the moment within seconds they've lost the goal and lost the player Bolton pumped up Somerby trying to do his bit to stop the extra effort from the side that's just equalised McGinley Wouldn't quite fall for McGinley. Goodney Bergson hammered it goalwards. It was a good height for the save. But nonetheless, the stop a significant one because Manchester City at the moment are really on the rack. McGinley offside. And it's the City fans who are quiet at the moment. Mixing, uh, watching the game with glancing down at their own timepieces. <laughs> Sellers. Churchich. Sellers. It comes to Patalainen. In the way, Patalainen goes in again. And uh, Roger Dilts as the goalkeeper once more provided a barrier to Bolton. Not a line of appealing for the corner, but a goal kick given by the referee. And that is the end of it all. Rather tamely, although uh, Alan Ball won't feel that. Bolton will despair for them at just the draw in this Northwest Derby. John McGinley, 16 minutes from time with an equaliser, seemed to offer such hope for a real finale, particularly when it was followed by the sending off of Nicky Summerby. But Bolton feel that they needed more than a draw today. Bolton much more deflated by the draw. Bolton won, Manchester City won. Colin, you wrote in your programme notes that this was a match that you absolutely had to win. 81 seconds, you're a goal down. Uh, I mean, it's happened throughout the season. Um, once again, we've given ourselves a mountain to climb. Uh, we've conceded that early goal, but credit to the players, they've stuck at it again. And we'll keep battling on. The belief is still there. Players are disappointed. Um, but we had a little bit of luck in the second half where they hit the crossbar. Uh, but overall, um, disappointed to, to lose two points, but... It's better to get one point than nothing at all. I feel empty. Uh, we've got a point, I suppose, a good point. Any other time of the season, it'd be a marvellous point away from home. But it's the way you achieve things in football, and uh, 
okay, we battled, we hung on at the finish, but uh, not for me. In the news this week, the Premier League players voted Newcastle's Les Ferdinand Player of the Year at a reception in London. At a star-studded gathering, Liverpool's Robbie Fowler received the Young Player of the Year award. This in recognition of his excellent season so far. There was also a special award for the greatest ever footballer, Pele. This for his outstanding contribution to the game. Les Ferdinand and Robbie Fowler joining some illustrious company. And there was more good news for Ferdinand as he scored the winning goal in England's friendly against Bulgaria. This gives England's coach Terry Venables another striking option for the forthcoming European Championships. Manchester City's Georgian midfield star Georgi Kintlati has agreed to sign a new five-year deal with the club. It's news which will delight City's fans. His incredible skills have been a shining light in an otherwise disappointing season. Swedish international Thomas Brolin, meanwhile, is reported to be unsettled at Leeds. This after his big money move from Palmer earlier this season. He's had difficulty holding down a regular place. His Leeds team suffered a convincing defeat by Aston Villa in last weekend's League Cup final. Serbian striker Savo Milosevic capped an impressive performance by scoring Villa's opening goal. The 1996 FA Cup final will be between Manchester United and Liverpool. United came through their semi-final with Chelsea. Liverpool overcame Aston Villa with another two goals from Robbie Fowler. And finally, with just five weeks to go, a check on who's likely to come up into the Premier League next season. Sunderland lead the promotion race, but they're being hotly pursued by Derby County. A relegation six-pointer at Loftus Road. Rangers were desperate to win for only the fifth time at home in the league, while Southampton were seeking to improve on a dismal away record of just one victory. Even without the suspended Matt Letizier, Southampton began brightly, but once Rangers had settled, it was they who went on to dominate. Ray Wilkins' team ahead on 23 minutes through Rufus Brevitt. This is first goal for the club in his 88th appearance. Rangers continued to press, Danny De Keogh came close to extending their lead. His finishing was more accurate just before the hour. De Keogh's 13th of the season, sparking off a joyous celebration by the young striker. Southampton had little to offer in response, and were exposed to the counter-thrust 13 minutes from the end. A prodigious kick-up field from Alan McDonald, releasing Kevin Gallant for Rangers third. This is Dave Besson, hesitated alarmingly. A vital win for Rangers, their first at home this year. The Keogh might even have increased their margin of victory. Rangers are only a point behind Southampton, and for Ray Wilkins, it was such a relief to win a game again. Quite pleasant actually. I, I, I've, I've forgotten what it was like, but uh, no, the guys have worked very hard. We put three good results together now, and uh, hopefully uh, we can continue along those lines. It puts us back, back in the pack now, back in the pack with uh, three or four of them, and uh, it's all in our hands once again. It was at the back end of last season that Coventry produced an outstanding display at White Hart Lane to stave off relegation. Ron Atkinson had two goal Peter Unlove to thank that evening, and for Saturday's game, the Zimbabwean was back in the starting lineup after impressing as a substitute at the Dell on Monday. Suggestions that some Coventry players were lacking desire at Southampton seemed to inspire them in the opening phase at Tottenham, and they led on 21 minutes. A stunning strike, too, from Captain Dion Dublin gave them the lead with his 16th of the season from Kevin Richardson's excellent pass. But Coventry's defence had kept only six clean sheets all season and their hopes of another one disappeared early in the second half. In the space of just over 60 seconds, they conceded two goals, first an equaliser from Teddy Sheringham. Then Coventry were opened up again when Raul Fox finished unerringly after David Howe's free kick had rebounded into his path. Spurs were at their most convincing now and a third goal soon after the hour completed the transformation. Fox the scorer again after Chris Armstrong had set him up. Spurs the winners by three goals to one to enhance their UEFA Cup prospects.
It was no classic at Selhurst Park, but Wimbledon's only concern was securing a win to help cement their Premier League status. They were indebted to goalkeeper Neil Sullivan. This for a double stop from Jason Lee. Fry certainly could have scored through Brian Roy. All credit though to Sullivan again for his alert goalkeeping and instinctive save too from the Dutch international. Andy Clark had inspired Wimbledon's win at Everton last week and he nearly broke through Forrest's defence. Steve Chettle recovered in time though to rectify his mistake in conceding possession. Wimbledon had the better of the second half and with just nine minutes remaining they won the match. Substitute Dean Holdsworth heading in a corner from Alan Kimball for his 16th of the season. After last week's success at Everton, Wimbledon are making positive strides now towards safety. Encouragingly too, it was their first clean sheet in 19 matches. There was no sadder figure at Wembley last Sunday than Howard Wilkinson, but the Leeds manager, booed by his own supporters after the League Cup final defeat, received a more sympathetic response on the team's return to Ellen Road. But how would the players react to their humiliation by Aston Villa? The answer, not too well. A penalty was soon conceded for Lucas Radovic's clumsy challenge on Nick Barmby. Graham Kavanagh converted the kick with a match just four minutes old. The game didn't really improve for Leeds and their revival hopes were hit by an injury to John Lukic, which meant Radaby taking over in goal for the second half. But then a Leeds penalty seemed to signpost a recovery. The kick awarded for a foul by Derek White on Brian Dean, with the second period only just underway. But another miserable afternoon for Leeds was summed up by Gary McAllister's miss, his shot not even demanding a save from Gary Walsh. Middlesbrough held on for their first league win since late December and nearly had a bigger one too. Radaby pulled off a fine reaction save from Robbie Musto. Borough should be safe now after a display that clearly satisfied their manager Brian Robson. Yes, I mean, after the run we've had, it's nice to get back into the winning way. Um, it's been a long time and I forgot what the feeling was like. Making his first appearance for the champions Blackburn at Ewood Park was Gary Fitcroft, signed recently from Manchester City for a fee of £3.2 million. But sadly, this was not to be a memorable debut for the England Under-21 international. After a mere two minutes, he was sent off. His offence was leading with his elbow in challenging Tony Grant. A red card may seem a little harsh for him, but both managers agreed later that referee Jeff Winter had no option but to dismiss him. A most inauspicious start for Flickcroft's league career at Blackburn. From there on, it was an ill-tempered first half, with Rovers struggling to compensate for the loss of the injured Alan Shearer. And inspired by the strong running of Andre Konchelskis, Everton were always menacing. Barry Horn had this shot well saved by Tim Flowers. It was only a matter of time, really, before Everton's dangerous raiding produced a goal. And it duly arrived on 71 minutes, scored by Daniel Abukachi. Five minutes later, it was 2-0, with the goal that Konchelskis thoroughly deserved. Another fine run and shot, although it did take a wicked deflection past Flowers. Rovers' ten men had struggled to contain Everton, and with virtually the last kick of the game, Joe Royal's team wound up an emphatic victory to inflict on Blackburn only a third home defeat of the season. Konchelskis again was the man to embarrass them. The final score, Blackburn nil, Everton three. Check now then on all the results from the weekend and what a lift for Creek Park Rangers whose relegation fight isn't over yet. Middlesbrough's problems have eased after their win at Ellen Road, likewise Wimbledon, but Coventry's Premier League tenure is in serious doubt. Tottenham's win over Coventry means they're now level with Arsenal in the chase for UEFA Cup places. Above them, the title race resumes in midweek, Liverpool at home to Newcastle. Defeat would surely end the Merseysiders' challenge. Manchester United are championship favourites, but next weekend they face the heat of a local derby with Manchester City at Main Road. City, of course, are still involved in the relegation shake-up, and the 1-1 draw at Burnden Park means that Bolton are back in bottom place, with Queen's Park Rangers having now climbed above both them and Coventry. Southampton need to win their games in hand to steer clear of trouble, and their run-in is as tough as anyone's. 
Indeed, Southampton's topsy-turvy week highlights the tense struggle that's developing at the wrong end of the table. Up one minute, down the next, they're one of a whole cluster of teams whose Premier League future still hangs precariously in the balance. English soccer returns next week. Next Monday, join Peter G for the 115th running of the world's most prestigious foot race. The 1996 Storm Gift. Next Monday afternoon, check your local guides for times. Coming up, Australia Television News.